Hi everyone, this is Barry Fitzgerald, Garen Perro columnist for Stockhead. Welcome to another of our Quartz Wrap series where we get to talk to CEOs about what's happening at their companies and particularly companies that are doing things. Now today we've got Peter Harold. Peter Harold's MD and CEO of Poseidon. Code is POS, trading at about 10.5 cents for a market cap of 315 million after just raising $22 million to get to keep the pace up at their Golden Swan project about 50 k's from Kalgoorlie. G'day Peter, how's it going? Yeah, well thanks Barry. Good. Uh, Peter, uh, you've been pulling some fantastic drill results from Golden Swan. Golden Swan's the new deposit, new discovery that uh, you're leveraging off to get back into production. Um, resource estimates not too far off, I, I take it now? Yeah, that's right. We've actually finished the drilling. It was about a three-month program. We actually had two rigs going, and we've just finished that, which is great. And we're just now waiting for all the assays. We put some out a couple of days ago, as you said, and sort of every week we're getting you know four or five new ones to put out. The results are coming through, and you know we're getting some high-grade material in there too. I mean, we had some results, you know, sort of 17, 18 percent nickel, which was fantastic. So yeah, it's all coming together, and that will culminate in a we think a, a maiden resource probably by the end of September. Right. Now, Golden Swan, if you can just position it for people in terms in relationship to the Silver Swan, the famous Silver Swan mine. Yeah. So Silver Swan was discovered by MPI, and, and I, I go back because I was working there at the time when we discovered it, 1995, and that was about 440,000 tonnes at 14% nickel, one of the highest grade you know, sort of resources discovered in the world. Um, 60,000 tonnes of nickel, um, and we're about, that was a, between sort of 200 and 500 um, metres below surface, and this, this discovery is about 1,000 metres below surface, 1,100, and it's about sort of three to 400 metres away to the sort of the, 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 the south. So it's, a, you know, it, but it's in the vicinity. It's probably a parallel Kamadiite channel. That's what it looks like anyway. Right, and is there space within the system there for it to perhaps be another silver swan? Yeah, look, we'd hope so. Yeah, I mean, Silver Swan, as we said, started off being a 62,000 tonne resource, and that was about 60, um, that was mined from 97 to about uh, probably 2000, and then uh, more, more nickel was discovered. And in total, out of that channel, they pulled around about 140,000 tonnes of nickel, averaging run of mine at about 5%. Um, you know, another one of, of another channel with that amount of nickel, and it would be fantastic. So, yeah, look, I mean, uh, we got a wall before you can run, and we've made this new discovery, Golden Swan. Let's get a resource out on that, you know, get it into a, a reserve, and then with that and Silver Swan, we're hoping we've got enough to, to crank up. That's the plan. Right. Now, it's not the end of the story, obviously, with Golden Swan. The southern terrain, where I think you're starting to drill there now that you finished the uh, definition drilling at the Golden Swan. What's the theory behind Southern Terrain? Yeah, so um, basically that's a theory that's come originally Gosling, which is sits above or below the open pit. It was thought that that might have been part of um, the Silver Swan Channel, but it's out far enough that people started then thinking maybe we should put some holes further down. There was a weak EM conductor that was identified probably 18 months, two years ago, and uh, we drilled that, and that was actually the discovery hole at Golden Swan. So um, it's, it's kind of now thought to be that there's this, what they call the Southern Terrace, or, um, and, and that is potentially a, another Kamadiite system. But it's, it's such early days, Barry, we really do need to drill you know, a, quite a few more holes into it to understand if it is another channel structure. And we're doing, as you said, some drilling now from the Gosling drill drive, which is about for sort of 500 metres below surface. And these are six or 700 metre holes. Really, four to start off with. Hopefully, we'll get mineralisation in them. If we don't, we'll obviously do ground downhole EM, and really just to try and ascertain, uh, you know, structure, and is there is there a, a channel structure in there that that could replicate Silver Swan? So it's pretty early days still, yeah, but it's very exciting. Yeah, nice to have that ongoing exploration upside there. Um, now. With the resource estimate coming, what will be the, the planning after that? FID by roughly when? Yeah, look, we're, we're saying by the end of this calendar year, um, and that um, you know that would allow us to put a, a mining inventory together for Golden Swan. Um, obviously, we're we're having conversations around trucking ore or turning the concentrator on and putting it through our own concentrator. So there's parallel discussions with off takers for ore and or concentrate. And, and they'll start to gather momentum once we've got a detailed mine schedule uh, that we can put in. And I think at this stage, you know, it's do we do Golden Swan on its own? 
Do we do golden swan plus silver swan? You know, is there? Do you do those both together, or do you um, lag one development after the other? All of those things we we haven't modelled yet. So all that's got to be done in the second half of this year, leading to that decision. You know, as we're sort of currently got it in the schedule for the end of this year, yeah, end of this calendar year. It must be. Uh, you mentioned yourself. You've been around for a while. You must be pretty happy with what uh, nickel eight sixty a pound. Up, still up thirty seven percent on last year's annual average. Eight sixty a pound's getting there, isn't it? It's a great price. And look, you know, when I was involved in MPI back in the discovery of Golden Swan, uh, the nickel price was two dollars thirty, and it got down to about a dollar eighty seven a pound. And at that price, we we couldn't make money out of a fourteen percent ore body. Back in those days, though, the payabilities for the for the smelters was a lot lower. We were probably only getting about a 55% payability. And what's happened now, of course, is payability is probably you know well into the 70s, possibly even into the 80s for higher grade concentrate, especially if it's got you know a good iron MGO ratio. So the world's changed. I mean, obviously, back in the in the 90s, it was all about you know um, stainless steel. Now it's stainless steel plus batteries. So it's very, it's a very different market. I think when I started in nickel, it was about a million tonnes of primary nickel consumed in the market. So 25 years later, it's now up two and a half million tonnes. And by 2050, they reckon it could be up to nine million tonnes. So that demand growth is driving a, a huge interest in, in nickel. You've got all the various you know, funds in there now. You've got the battery manufacturers doing do, deals direct with the nickel supplier. So we're in a, a new paradigm. And a lot of the nickel, as you know, around the world is low grade. So to get a, you're going to need a, a price of this sort of level or higher to bring on, you know, some of these lower grade deposits to basically fill up that demand gap that's going to open up, you know, pretty quickly, the supply demand gap. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, everything goes according to plan. Theoretically, when could you be in production to capitalise on these prices? Yeah, look, we're, we're, we're saying to the markets, you know, it's, it's back half of 2020, so the second half of next calendar year. So, you know, that would be a realistic... If, if we need to refurbish the concentrator, that's about a six-month job. You know, obviously developing one or two underground mines, even though there's a decline there, you've still got to put in the services and ventilation and other things. These things take time. You can't rush them. So we, we think realistically second half of next year to produce ore and or concentrate would, would, be, would be realistic. That, that's what we're targeting. Um, when, when in the second half, you know, that's really dependent on all the work that we're doing now up until sort of December. So, yeah, we, but I think it'll comfortably second half of next year. Okay. As the story unfolds with Golden Swan, you've also got uh, Windara and Lake Johnson. I'm just wondering if, if you could look out maybe two or three years' time, what's your sort of aspirational target, you think, for yeah. the, all well, the projects? Well, you know, I was involved in Panoramic, as you know, and we had originally the, the Sally Malay or Savannah project, which was doing about, I think, seven or 8,000 tonnes of nickel. And we would, then we bought Land Frankie and we ramped that up, you know, from small production. We got Deacon and we were doing sort of 11,000 tonnes. So that was a 20,000 tonne nickel producer. You know, you could see us potentially uh, emulating that out of our three assets. You've got ore from Windara that could potentially be sold to BHP or, or trucked down to um, Black Swan if we got the bigger concentrator going, the 1.1 million tonne throughput. We've got low-grade um, disseminated material in the Black Swan open pit. And as you mentioned, we've got the Lake Johnson plant and, and the Maggie Hayes uh, ore body and, and you could there's a million and a half tonnes of capacity there. So, you know, you could see you could sort of see your way through to be, you know, between a ten and twenty thousand tonne producer, you know, as as an aspirational target. A absolutely. But based on, you know, we've got four hundred thousand tonnes of, of nickel in resource before we include gold and swan, because that's not a resource category yet. So there's plenty of nickel and we've got two processing plants which are in very good condition. So, you know, that's that would be obviously all subject to nickel price, and it does look like it's going in the right direction. Yeah, well, the time's certainly right to be chasing that sort of aspiration. And would I be right, I'm going back to the last time we saw nickel at these sort of prices, and I'm thinking of uh, uh, Mincor and a few others who had similar sort of production back then and had billion dollar plus market caps. Yep, yep. Um, Panoramic was a, we got to $1.2 billion market cap. Yeah, and that's when nickel was between 10 and $20 a pound. And we were producing, if, if nickel equivalent, we were about 22,000 tonnes if you include the copper and the cobalt at, at the peak. So yeah, absolutely. Mincor the same. 
Um, you know, they, they were all plus billion dollar companies. And, you know, look, realistically, I don't think yet we've actually had the investment, um, you know, equity markets really get excited yet about nickel. I think they've definitely jumped on board the, the lithium train and that's that's obviously you know very tied to the nickel train with the batteries so I think if you st started to see some of the money that's gone into lithium start coming into the nickel juniors crikey you could you could it could really start to see some some high valuation so I think it's it's it feels to me like 2005 and I remember panoramic was about a dollar a share and it went to six dollars you know so you get you get the, the the production profile right. You get the exploration profile. You got stories where you're build, building reserve resource, and the nickel price does the right thing. You know you start to get a lot of investors that currently aren't invested in nickel moving into the space. There's very few places you can go. So I think you know you start to have more um, buyers than sellers, and you know that's where things can really start to get exciting. So look, I think we're 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 starting to move into that territory. And the demand side just looks incredible. So I think we're, we're, we're well set for some very, very good years. I mean, so much so that I, I took my son to Diggers, I think I told you before, and uh, he's nearly 20, and uh, he had three job offers in the first day. So, and he hasn't even finished his degree yet. So it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty exciting, and there's a lot of activity up there at the moment, certainly in WA, and, uh, you know, they, that we need people. You know, so there's a lot more developments going on. It's going to be a really exciting time. Yeah, happy days. A uh, bit unlike your Collingwood Football Club, mate. Season over there? <laughs> it's been a tough one, hasn't it? We've had to deal with a lot of things. Um, yeah, but look, it's rebuild phase. Got to, got to find a new coach first. And, uh, and then uh, as we move forward, rebuild. And it's a, it's a good club. And uh, I've been a supporter for, you know, gosh, 50 plus years. And uh, we'll see them strong again in the not too distant future. There we go. Nice to end on a note of optimism. All righty, Peter, thanks for that, mate. Uh, best of luck with it, and we'll be watching with interest as uh, yeah. 21 Thank unfolds. You. Cheers. Thanks very much, Barry. Good on you.